you guys, it's Christina, and today I wanna to share with you five foods that I always avoid. And well, that's a catchphrase really, because I'm gonna be sharing with you more than five things that I typically don't eat, but for all intents and purposes, here we go. And just keep in mind that these are things that I personally don't eat. I'm not telling anybody not to eat them. I'm not preaching. What you put in your body is your choice, but since I get asked this question so many times, what do I eat in a day? I figured I would maybe perhaps share with you guys some things that I don't eat because it's really not about being perfect, but it's about being healthy. And it's about sharing with people little things that they can do to improve their health. And I wanna be here to inspire and show you maybe some things that you could eliminate from your diet so that you can feel and be healthier. So I'm standing in front of a regular grocery store right now and since I wouldn't typically buy these items, I'm not gonna buy them. I'm just gonna show you what I don't typically eat and then I'm just gonna leave them in the store and hopefully inspire you. Okay, so before I share with you number one, since I'm vegan, it goes without saying that I don't eat any meat or dairy and I've excluded those from my list of five things because it makes it more interesting for me and for you. And it also means I don't eat things like chicken or steak or cheese or milk, anything like that. People always look at me when I film in public by myself. And sometimes people stand around and watch. Mufasa is on point today. <laughs> and I just wanna point out that anytime you walk into any grocery store, it's usually the produce section that is right there in front. This is usually the only section that I ever go into in any grocery store, if I'm ever in a grocery store, because most of you guys know I run my own produce co-op. And um, we rock, so you can check that out at rawfullyorganic.com. Okay, so my number one is oils. Oils of any kind. They don't taste like anything and they're pure fat and there are some really great natural alternatives like nuts or seeds or avocados or coconut that are much better for your body and make you feel much lighter and better than oils. The one thing that I usually always avoid at any cost is oil. From olive oil all the way to canola oil, it's much better to eat the whole food than the extracted man processed source of oil. For instance, I would much rather eat avocado than avocado oil. I would much rather eat a coconut rather than the coconut oil because it's one less step man processed. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're Christina. Yes, I am. I yes. Hi. We ran into a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a That's fan. That's awesome. Well, you'll get to see this vlog when I post it. It's going up tomorrow. Awesome. It's about the five foods that I always avoid. Yeah, that's it. I Say hi. I'm watching it anyway. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my number two of five foods that I always avoid, my number two is refined sugar or any type of processed sugar of any kind. If you want to die early, be overweight, potentially have a heart attack, then this is the way to go. So as I'm standing here and looking at all of the different kinds of packaged sugar, I just wanna say that this is not all inclusive to just this aisle of the grocery store. When you start looking at labels, look for things like refined sugar on your labels. This is in like so many different products out there. Try and avoid refined sugars if you can. Better alternatives to consume would be things like fruit. Fruit is nature's candy, it is so good, and it is a food that your body recognizes as fuel and is a good carbohydrate for your system. Not to mention dates, dates are amazing. Or how about even coconut nectar instead of agave and even sugar cane? All are great alternatives to refined sugar. So my number three is caffeine and, well, don't kill me for this one, but alcohol. Those of you who are close to me know that I don't drink at all. And I truly believe that caffeine 
alcohol included and I know that I'm grouping them together and they shouldn't be grouped together but since I only have five things that I'm telling you I'm grouping them together for this video for those of you who want to know why I don't drink alcohol I have many different reasons for that and I made a video for it not too long ago and I'll be sure to put that link below for you or put it somewhere here um, but as far as caffeine goes it is a mind slash body altering drug that does not make you feel good and you can become dependent on it and it's not healthy for you. Some of the drinks that I'm showing you not only have caffeine in them but also have a ton of refined sugar in them. They're kind of like a double whammy of not so greatness for your body. Not only are they going to make you not feel good long term but they also will not make you look good long term. Some alternatives to caffeine or alcohol, if you are looking for them, would be things like juices or smoothies. So, so good for you. I start every morning off with a fresh green juice or a fruit juice of some kind that gets me energized for the day. And a smoothie. Everybody loves smoothies. Not only that, but for those of you who are looking for a healthy, alcoholic beverage, there is such a thing as raw, organic, red wine that is much more beneficial to your body than perhaps drinking a six pack of beer on a Saturday night. Just saying. If you're looking for it, it's there. It goes on forever. It goes on forever. You know what? Just avoid this aisle. Don't even walk down this aisle. We gotta go. Keep moving. Go, go, go. Another thing that I want to add is that for those of you who are looking for another energizing drink, don't forget about coconut water or even sugarcane juice. Somehow I ended back up in aisle eight with the oil and refined sugar. So just avoid aisle eight wherever you are. That includes the oil, refined sugar, and my number four, which is salt. Salt and flour and battery dry mixes of things that you would bake that are pasty. I'm lost in this aisle. Save me. They also have condensed milks in this aisle. Aisle 8 is a skipper. Everywhere you go, don't even go to aisle 8. Just avoid it at all costs. Okay, so my number four is salt. And I know salt is something that people like to sprinkle on their foods to give it flavor, but the thing is, is that you don't really need to put salt on your food. And it's something that actually makes your body retain a lot of water. It can cause you to gain a lot of weight over time. And I know that your body needs natural salt and you can get this through really any fruit or vegetable. Things like celery, Swiss chard, tomatoes, those items have natural salt in it that your body can use that will not make you wake up puffy in the morning or retain a lot of water. And again, I'm not telling anybody not to, but I'm just saying that I've noticed that for me, even if I'm putting on raw, vegan, pink Himalayan salt, I notice I wake up in the morning with puffy eyes and feel like I'm retaining a lot of water. So that being said, I always try to avoid salt whenever I can because I don't feel good when I consume it. Time to leave aisle eight. We've graduated. And my number five is gonna be kind of painful because I think it eliminates all the rest of the aisles in the grocery store. <laughs> but I'm just gonna say it. Number five is gluten. You want to take a picture with me? I'm yes. vlogging. You can come on in. We have another visitor. You want to be in my vlog? Yes. Hey. Oop, I dropped the camera. All of my friends. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're saying hi to you too. Hi, too. I'm filming a video on five foods that I always avoid. Oh, pasta. What aisle are we? Yep. Oh, we're in the pasta aisle. <laughs> Since I'm standing here, I'm going to go ahead and read the definition of gluten from the dictionary to make sure that I get it right, that I'm not confusing anybody. Gluten, from the Latin stem of the word glue is a mixture of proteins found in wheat and related grains including barley, rye, oat, and their species and hybrids. Gluten gives elasticity to dough helping it rise and keeps its shape and often gives the final product of a chewy texture. So more specifically when I'm talking about gluten I'm talking about really unhealthy grains and rice and bread and pasta. 
Now there are gonna be some exceptions here, especially to those who are transitioning. You can find healthier alternatives to different types of these products that don't have gluten that are gonna make your transition to eating healthier a lot better for you. But as I'm standing in this aisle of the grocery store, I wanna just say there are a lot of items that have gluten in them that are not good for you. If you want clear skin, if you want better energy, if you wanna wake up in the morning feeling more energized and vibrant, um, if you have issues with constipation or digestion, Eliminating gluten is going to help you immensely. Please give this one a try. There are a ton of things that include gluten, so if you're interested in, in eliminating that from your lifestyle, I would definitely Google it and make sure that when you go to the grocery store, you are buying something that is gluten-free. But I can already tell you right now that some easy alternatives to this would be fruits and vegetables. All the time, baby. All the time. My favorite gluten alternatives are actually zucchini pasta or any other type of vegetable pasta that you can make with your spiralizer. And I just posted a recipe for one on my Instagram a few days ago. And dehydrated snacks. Those are a great alternative to eating gluten. <sighs> so I'm in the candy aisle right now. I think this aisle goes without saying that you should avoid all processed candies at any cost. So if I were gonna include a bonus number six, it would be aisle four. Avoid aisle four at every cost. <sighs> it's like a heart attack waiting to happen. Or better yet, how about diabetes? Oh, wait a minute. I already had that and got rid of it by eating fruits and vegetables. That's right. If you're listening in there, I'm hoping that you receive this message. Because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ah, I feel fine now, so I'm gonna enjoy my life while I can. But then wait, what happens? Boom, it hits you like that, and then you get sick and you don't feel good. Are you listening in there? So here's what concerns me the most, is that most people will not make a change in their diet or their lifestyle until it's too late. I was diagnosed with hyperglycemia, which is essentially type two diabetes, when I was just 16 years old. That is so young to be diagnosed with anything for sickness. We should be healthy and happy at that age. But the thing is, is that people don't want to change until it's too late because there's no pressing or dire reason to change an unhealthy habit. So here's my advice to you. Start making small changes now. That way you can feel healthy and look your best all of the time so that you can live a long and happy life. And I'm here to give you the tools so that you can achieve that level of happiness. Do not wait until it is too late. Start making healthy changes now so that you can live a long and happy and healthy life. So the thing is, is that it's about you, but it's not about you. Let me explain. It's about you, but it's not just about you. It is, but it isn't. Your health is accumulating right now. Your cells are rebuilding and reforming every single day. Everything that you eat matters to you because you live in your body and you're gonna feel it. But the thing is, is that everything that you eat or consume or you purchase affects not just you, but everyone and everything around you. What your dollar supports, you create more of. My recommendation is to give your dollar to the things that you want to support. Support health, support community, support your organic and local farmers, and start creating more fresh produce options on this planet, and less of things that are gonna kill our society. It's about you, but it's not just about you. It's about all of us. When one of us feels good, we all feel good. All that being said, you don't have to be 100% fully raw or even vegan to be healthier or happier. However, removing these five recommended items from your diet will help you feel much better. If you guys need recipes, don't forget that I have my recipe book out called The Fully Raw Diet where I can show you how to make some of these amazing juice or smoothie or salad recipes that I talk about all the time. And for those of you who haven't been keeping up with me lately, I'm getting ready to go on my book tour and I'm so excited. 
I hope you guys are buying your tickets and getting ready. I'm going to be in Dallas next week, and then I'm going to be in New York and Connecticut. And um, I do want to just say that we're looking to add LA, New Orleans, and Chicago, and potentially even Colorado to my book tour list. So stay tuned to my website at fullyraw.com backslash events to sign up and get your ticket because it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, you guys, what are your thoughts on my five things that I always leave out of my diet? If you like this video and if you like the five things that I've excluded, please give this video a thumbs up and I would love for you to comment below and let me know some things that you always eliminate from your diet. If you guys want more tips, tricks, or recipes on how to go fully raw, please subscribe here to Fully Raw Christina as we have fun living this lifestyle and being healthy together. If you guys want to follow me daily, you can also find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Fully Raw Christina. All right, you guys, Mufasa has been on point today. We had fun on this little field trip and I can't wait for the next video. I really hope you guys like this one. Sending you all my hugs and my love.